What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Simple Man Podcast. My name is Brody. This is our 25th episode, and I'm pretty excited about that because that means there's more episode of this podcast than there is of The Mandalorian, so basically means we're a more successful show than Mando, so I mean... Big ups to you guys. I appreciate you guys listening. Uh, it means a lot to uh, do this every week and have fun with you guys. It, it really does uh, bring a lot of joy into my life, and I hope it does into yours, at least for the you know 20 to 30 minutes that uh, you'll be listening here. So I hope you guys had a great weekend, and uh, apologize for the late episode. I was in Las Vegas this weekend partying with Din Grogu. Uh, if you saw that on my uh, Simple Man Instagram, it's pretty funny. Um, there was a bunch of Star Wars costumes out there on Las Vegas Boulevard, and um, they were all bad. So, uh, no, it was fun. Uh, I was there for a friend's wedding, and it uh, just took me an extra day to get the pot out. So, apologize for that. But glad you're here now listening. And, um, yeah. Last week was actually the first week of 2023 with no new Star Wars show episode um, that came out, but of course, Jedi Survivor debuted on Friday, so that kind of made up for it. Obviously, not everybody gets to play because it's on next gen and PC only, so that's kind of a bummer, and honestly, I wish it wasn't like that. I do have a PS5, so... I'm about to go play it after I'm done recording this, but um, I I do wish it was just, you know, more available uh, to more fans. You know, not everybody has a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, whatever it is, um, or a nice PC to, you know, play the game. So that is a bummer, but it is cool nonetheless. The game looks absolutely amazing, and uh, I'm so excited to play it, uh, like I said. I'll probably be playing right when I get off this podcast and I get everything wrapped up. So this will probably be a quick episode in general as, you know, there's not as much stuff to talk about now. It's kind of a bummer. But honestly, at the same time, there's too much Star Wars now. <laughs> I've I've kind of come to the conclusion or I just had the feeling recently like there's just too much Star Wars like and I'm all for it. I love, you know, the new content. I you guys know I will shill it up just as much as the next guy, but honestly, I don't like how rapidly the major projects come out. Like I'm all for comics and books coming out like all the time because that's such a specific audience and people who are book nerds can read it up and people love comics like those are usually kind of just a constant thing going but the major projects you know the shows movies video games just feels like we're constantly having one of those recently and I don't know it just gets a little bit overwhelming as somebody who is a content creator um, you know of Star Wars and honestly I just love and cherish the stuff so much that it just doesn't give you enough time to like really like unpack it and go through it and, uh, you know, make content on it because we're on to the next thing already, which is Jedi Survivor. And again, I do appreciate the fact that we have so much Star Wars out there and that it is so prevalent in media nowadays, but I don't know. I I just kind of feel like I I wish it was spread out a little bit more. And, um, you know, Visions and uh, the Young Jedi Adventures is coming out on May 4th, which is cool, along with all, you know, all kinds of stuff, toys, collectibles, books, and comics, I'm sure. Um, but it, it just feels like there's just so much stuff that comes out that, you know, you don't get a chance to appreciate it. And, you know, we thrived and survived on three to six movies for 20 to 30 years. And it just felt, you know, people cherish that stuff so much. And that's the reason why it is so loved by the fans is because that's all we had. And, you know, we had really no choice but to love it. But now it's kind of like, well, I don't like this, and oh, well, here's this new thing, and I don't know, I just, again, now I'm I'm probably backtracking on everything I've said for the past, like, three years, but I don't know, again, I'm not complaining about the amount, I'm just complaining a little bit about the speed at which these major projects are coming out, because, I don't know, I just like to take time and break them down, and I just feel like in the past week, I haven't heard anything about Mando since the, you know, uh, since, uh, pretty much survivor came out it's just been all survivor and mando is gone and nobody even cares anymore like the fight is over which is nice but it's just gone with the wind and you know we're waiting for ahsoka so 
I, I don't know. I, I'm interested to see if you guys would agree with that and if you think or feel the same way because um, I kind of did start to feel like this last year, though. You know, the year started out strong with Boba Fett and Obi-Wan and then Andor came and Tales of the Jedi. And it at the end of the year, I just kind of got overwhelmed. I was like, geez, man, we've had so much stuff. And this year, it's just even more. You know, we just keep getting more and more and more. So... Again, I'm not super complaining. I'm probably going to go play Jedi Survivor for like five hours after this. And I'll eat up as much Star Wars as they'll give me. Again, I think just from the creator perspective, it does get a bit overwhelming when my brain has been so focused on Mando for the past two months. And then it's just gone and, you know, irrelevant at this point now. But I guess maybe that is just my perspective. I know it's not how everybody feels, so... Again, uh, <laughs> did not mean to kind of go off on that, but there's just too much Star Wars, man. Too much, too much. Uh, that's crazy to say, but on- honestly, awesome at the same time. And as somebody who does enjoy the majority of it, it, it does feel cool that you know we continuously get this awesome, uh, these awesome projects. So, and hey, that goes along with the old stuff too. Return of the Jedi uh, released or re-released in theaters this past weekend, and. Uh, it was awesome to get to hear people's stories of, you know, going to the theaters with their friends to see it or taking their son that, you know, obviously they would have had no opportunity to take their children there um, to see Return of the Jedi in theaters. But that kind of stuff is just awesome to me and such a huge reason of why I love Star Wars and why it's so cool that it's just so prevalent in today's uh, pop culture and stuff is, you know, the fact that we get to share it with our friends and family experiences that we would have never had because the movie came out 40 years ago it's just it's just so cool and i mean it made five million dollars over the weekend which is cool i mean it was barely promoted and it was barely in that many theaters worldwide so pretty cool to see a 40 year old movie you know just hop back into the theaters and make five million dollars so I, i i'm pretty pumped to see that i don't know if i'll make it to see it in theaters i wish i could but Got work and busy with other stuff. I'm going to be too busy slicing stormtroopers up in Jedi Survivor, which to go into that a little bit, I, you know, no spoilers or anything like that. I've been seeing a lot about the game. Had a few things, minor spoiler uh, for myself, but overall, I've done a good job at, you know, trying to stay away from it. And I'm super looking forward to getting into it myself. But I've heard some great things. It pretty much got like, nine out of 10 and up reviews across the board from all the major, you know, media outlets. And I mean, that's pretty encouraging. I feel like after Jedi fallen order, I mean, they kind of essentially made, you know, the same game, like the same type of game. It's just the sequel. And I mean, you know, that can get boring for people nowadays, but it seems like they have knocked it out of the park, really improved on a lot of things um, and made this, a game of its own. So it looks like a lot of like legends type stuff, you know, that we would see in comic books, um, maybe like, you know, the cartoons, the animated shows, but it's in this video game and it, it looks really unique and I'm looking forward to it. So hope you guys are enjoying that if you've played it already. And if you haven't, I'd check out some YouTube gameplay if you're, if you're fiending for it and you know, you're not going to be able to play for a long time. There's definitely a lot of creators out there who, have posted the cinematic part so you can you know check out the story of it and the gameplay as well there's there's definitely some updates to the gameplay that just look wizard so on top of that we do have star wars vision season two coming out on thursday which is may 4th um there's nine new shorts releasing they all look absolutely incredible i do like the fact that they went with animation overall instead of just like anime style studios um they they went with nine animation studios that are like from all around the world and so it's just going to offer a lot of you know unique flavors to star wars and I'm super looking forward to it. I've heard it's really good and it might even be better than the first season. So I really enjoyed the first season and thought like, I mean, they pretty much did as good a job as you can with, you know, what they set out to do with shorts um, that are non-canon and and just kind of for fun. So looking forward to that. And honestly, the, uh, the Young Jedi Adventures, that show is coming out on May the 4th as well. That show is so cute. <laughs> I've been watching the shorts that they've been posting on YouTube. They're on Disney Plus as well, but man, I, I'm sitting there watching it and just feeling like, man, if I was five, six, seven years old, 
I would be absolutely loving this and it would make me so excited to be seeing that on Disney Channel and stuff like and I mean I've seen some adult it hasn't been too bad considering you know how bad Star Wars fans are but I've seen some complaints about the show from older people you know who aren't children and it's just like dude come on it's literally for children it's for babies like you you really shouldn't have an opinion on it unless you're just kind of enjoying it like I mean there's really nothing else to it like it is really cute though I mean we're seeing these little Jedi and stuff and in this last short that they posted there was like the main villain I think that's going to be in the uh in the show and his name is Tabor and honestly, his design is really cool. Like, he looks pretty cool for a villain. And um, I don't know. I just think it's really cute. And I think it's really good for kids to have that. And it obviously is going to introduce Star Wars to a new generation of, like, literally, like, three-year-olds who are going to grow up watching that and then be able to be introduced to all the, uh, you know, more teenage-level, adult-level content when they get older. So if you don't like it, you can just trip into the Sarlacc pit is all I'm saying. Um I've been getting some absolute flack on Twitter for my tweets, man. And Twitter was my place to go and just tweet nonsense. And then if I had a banger, screenshot it and post on Instagram. But my tweets have been absolutely going dummy viral. And, uh, you know, people be hating on what I'm saying. <laughs> I I brought up Obi-Wan Kenobi because I watched the finale last week. And it just incredible. I mean, it was awesome. And uh, I, I tweeted... Here, let me let me pull up the tweet here. I said, we really let... I, I, I will take some responsibility. This was weirdly phrased. I should have phrased it different. But I said, we really let Riva and a shaky camera overshadow what is one of the deepest, most, most emotional epic stories ever told in Star Wars. Just rewatched the finale again, and good lord, it had me in tears. Which is facts. Like, I was watching the finale, and I was, like, literally crying. I... I didn't, I don't remember crying when I first watched it, but this time around, it really got me. And, um, you know, I tweeted that and people were like, I was getting hate because of just the fact of what I said that Kenobi was good. People were saying it's absolute dog shit and, you know, an, an atrocity to Star Wars and just the worst thing ever. You know, obviously Star Wars fans have that to say about pretty much everything. But then I was getting hate because I said, oh, Reva, Reva was awesome. What are you talking about? Oh, you're misogynistic and racist. I was like, no, dude, that's not what I meant. Overall, you know, I meant Star Wars fans let Reva and a shaky camera overshadow the show. And, you know, because that was kind of the main reception of the whole thing was really the production quality and Reva distracting from Obi-Wan and, and Vader and that sort of thing. That's really what I meant is Star Wars fans in general. I didn't mean myself. I personally really liked Reva. I mean, she was pretty cool to me. I do agree to some extent, like there was maybe a, a bit too much focus on her story within, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, quote unquote. But I enjoyed the character. I thought she was pretty cool. I got, I have multiple Reva action figures. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not a hater, man. I, I, I enjoyed her. And it's just funny how literally anything you say on Twitter, Instagram, like you're going to get hate about it. Like if you put an opinion out there, you're going to get shit back. And I guess that's part of it. But at the same time, it's just annoying. Like we're all fans. I don't get why we always have to bicker and fight. And I've really never had like the inclination to like talk crap to somebody about Star Wars, unless it was like something like real life racist, like outright rude, you know, bullying, that sort of thing. But if it's like your opinion about Star Wars, like you're free to say whatever you want. Like I have literally heard people say the most insane shit about Star Wars and just the most out of left field takes and like, I've never needed to go, no, you're wrong. You're, you're an idiot for saying that. I've just, I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I know a lot of you guys are like that as well. Like you don't see the confrontation within people's takes of star Wars. Like, but so many people are just there to like, maybe be right about things or get attention. I don't know. All I'm saying is it's annoying. And, uh, I, you know, I don't want to really harp on that, but it is what it is. I, uh, sorry, I have absolutely steamy hot takes on Twitter. Or as some people might say, some steamy hot shit. But uh, 
to each his own, man. I'm I'm enjoying Star Wars, and I know I complained earlier that there's too much, but um, I welcome it. I'm looking forward to Ahsoka and all the new stuff. I'll be watching Visions this week for sure. My girlfriend's birthday is actually May the 4th, um, so I don't get to celebrate Star Wars Day like everybody else does. I have to celebrate. I got to celebrate my girlfriend. What the frick? I mean, come on. It's Star Wars Day. I'm trying to celebrate Star Wars. No, I... Actually, I don't really care for Star Wars Day that much. Don't shoot, don't shoot, but I really don't care that much about Star Wars Day. I celebrate this shit every single day of my life. So, you know, May the 4th is cool because it is Star Wars Day, technically, and it sounds cool, (laughs) like May the Force be with you, but, I mean, overall, you know, I'm here posting about Star Wars every single day, so... I think it's more for, uh, you know, kind of more casual fans that get to go, you know, celebrate Star Wars or something like that. People act like it's a holiday. It's literally just a day. But um, it is cool. We got May the 4th, Revenge of the 5th, uh, Return of the 6th, whatever you want to say. Uh, Revenge of the Sith, Return of the Sith. I don't know. People, Star Wars fans will be coming up with anything. But I hope you guys do enjoy your May the 4th and, uh, you know, go out and do something fun with your friends. Go have a lightsaber battle. Watch a Star Wars movie, at least. That That is a, you know, it's an obligation on May the 4th. At least do that. So, um, yeah, guys, that's about it. That's all I got for you. Not a ton going on in terms of, like, the new projects this week other than Jedi Survivor. But I don't have much on that for you yet because I'm literally about to go play it. So I'll update you guys next week. Um, I appreciate you guys listening. If you don't follow me or subscribe to me on YouTube already, Hit your boy up, Brody One Kenobi, on YouTube. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please hit me with a rating. That would be huge and really helps the show. Yeah, guys, that's about it. I appreciate you listening, and uh, we'll be back next week. May the 4th be with you. Peace.